all other countries too around us and across the world are facing challenges. If I just a lot of Christ in Europe and America, we are faced with a nation that is on the edge of bankruptcy. That's the truth. Tinubu welcoming new ministers to the federal cabinet. One thing he said that doesn't seem to be true is that Nigeria was on the verge of bankruptcy when he took over power last year. This cannot be true. Let's find out if it is true or that he's incompetent. He's just showing Nigerians that he got his priorities wrong. Let's find out with this example. If a company that their current account balance normally hovers around 10 billion naira every year and out of the blue, all of a sudden, they find out that the account balance money inflow has dropped to as low as 50 million naira. What are they going to do? What is the CEO of the company going to do? Because obviously, they are going down. Is it going to continue digging deeper? Or is it going to find ways to increase the inflow, their revenue? Is it going to spend that 50 million naira on buying a fleet of vehicles for their executives? Or building a mansion for himself or another executive? Absolutely not. He will not do that. In fact, if he tries to spend that money on something that will not add an immediate value to the company, the board of directors will sack him immediately. That's if the board of directors are going to tolerate him during the drop phase because from 10 billion naira to 50 million naira is a serious drop. They wouldn't even tolerate him when it was still at 5 billion naira. Now, compare that to Nigeria PLC. If truly he met an empty treasury that Nigeria was truly on the verge of bankruptcy when he came to power, he shouldn't have spent billions of naira buying a fleet of vehicles for the first lady. After all, the office of the first lady is not recognized by the Nigerian constitution. The Nigerian government must be guided by the Nigerian constitution. In this case, they don't care. Just like board of directors are guided by the rules they made themselves, Nigerian government are not operating under any rules. They operate on what pleases them. Whatever they think they want, their selfish interest comes first before national interest. Also, he shouldn't have spent billions of naira changing the fleet of his own vehicles. Yes, after all, all the vehicles in use when he came to power, all of them didn't suddenly break down. They didn't suddenly expire. They were still working. So if he truly met an empty treasury, why not manage the vehicles till revenue increases, till things pick up again? Also, why spend billions of naira, more than 20 billion naira on a new mansion for the vice president? Why? It was completely unnecessary to spend that kind of money if truly the treasury was empty. Like the saying goes, if your house is on fire, you don't waste time chasing around rats. You run into the house to see what you can save. And these are the list of the spendings they made last year. What about the 90 billion naira they spent on Hajj? Spending 90 billion naira to boost tourism in another country far away Saudi Arabia. It's not the behavior of someone whose house is on fire. No, not at all. So it cannot be true that Nigeria was on the verge of bankruptcy at the time, even if there was a slight chance. The people in power, politicians definitely didn't feel it because they were busy helping themselves, fulfilling their frivolous desires. The masses felt it because they imposed more hardship on the masses. Despite the fact that the masses were already down due to Buhari's failed policies, instead of showing people that there is a new government that has brought joy to their lives, they increase the poverty, they increase the suffering and the hardship by more than two times over. And that's not the worst of it. What about the new presidential jet that cost over 200 billion naira? The message here that Nigerians must understand is if politicians are spending the money this way while telling them that Nigeria is bankrupt, it will give them an insight on how they spent the money when there was no sign of bankruptcy. Nigeria has always had a spending problem, not a revenue problem. Even if they earn $100 billion annually today or starting from next year, they will still give Nigerians excuses why things are not working, why they are not investing it in critical infrastructure. They will find ways to expend all the money, even into credit. Yes, they will even borrow money on top of that revenue. They will still spend everything and the coming generation will continue repaying the loans. So it's a matter of priority. 
didn't start today. He started right from Gowon era when he made that infamous statement that Nigeria's problem is not money but how to spend it. This is a man that couldn't invest in the future. All the billions of dollars Nigeria earned at the time, if this man had invested it in only power generation, Nigeria wouldn't be where we are today. So what's the solution to force government to spend money wisely? The only solution is pressure. You have to mount pressure on them, just like what happened a few days ago. The backlash from Nigerians when they saw little kids being arraigned for treason in court, it forced the government to do the right thing. Even now, they are using it for photo ops, trying to turn it to a political campaign, pretending as if it wasn't them that ordered the arrest of these people in the first place. Yes, he made the threat, as you can see in this video, that they will arrest anyone. That was during the NBAD governance protest in August. And when they were arrested, they wanted to dump them in prison, but the prison officials refused. Yes, kudos to them for refusing. Our government will not stand idly by and allow a few with a clear political agenda to tear this nation apart. In fact, it's only prison officials out of all government departments that handle this issue that you can say they did their job. Their refusal forced the police to detain them at the SARS headquarters in Abuja. So you can see, they've pretended as if it wasn't them that ordered the police to clamp down hard on protesters, even people who weren't violent, they were busy throwing tear gas, using massive force to stop people from exercising their rights. Now they are suddenly pretending as if, ah, we are knowing it for the first time. Just like the attorney general, he pretended that, ah, I wasn't aware, I didn't know they charged these kids to court, all that blah blah blah. Look at the police spokesperson who justified, said anything he could to convince people why they are charging kids to court. Now that Tinubu has ordered them to be released, what is he going to say? The fact that you are 30 year old, uh, doesn't mean you cannot be charged to court. So anybody, even the child, child, children and young persons that you can still charge you to court because you are 13 years old, you can go to court. So they, they have charged them to court for this. On behalf of the federal government of Nigeria, the police has taken the bull by the horn because these are those who actually are leveraged on the end bad governance protest. They are jacked the protest. Even the judge who remanded them in prison, he had all the power to free them, but he failed to do his job. What of the prosecutor who said they were adults, that some of them were married, that they can charge them? He was saying all sorts of things to justify the fact that they charged children to court. Now, the person they did it for, they didn't just do it for themselves, they did it for someone, they did it to get favors from someone. That person has now turned around and said, ah, these are children, release them. How do they feel now? All of them are adults. Most of them are married men. None of them is a minor. Some of them are university graduates. The small, small kids you are seeing here, they came with some of their parents to come and greet their loved ones. They are not even the real suspect standing trial in this case. These boys were arrested in Kaduna and Zaria. Imagine the level we find ourselves now. Do, do you know how much it costs us to be at this level of a democracy in this country? These young boys are trying to destabilize Nigeria.